Hello my friends and welcome, we have some interesting updates. First of all, let's go to the Bakhmut city. Ukraine was able to take back some of the territory. I guess it happened over here and we were able to cross the natural obstacle, the river in this area. Well, I'm almost sure about it, but we'll see the tomorrow's update of the military map because there are some of the different resources saying about the different picture. But the main idea is the same, Ukrainian army entered the Bakhmut city again. And Wagner commanders withdraw their forces from the Bakhmut city, but apparently they got some of the clashes with the regular Russian army. One of the units of the Wagner forces, one Ural truck, went from the city and was ambushed by the regular Russian army battalion. The Russian regular army destroyed the Wagner truck, but the Wagner soldiers were okay, they managed to escape and fought back, capturing many of the Russian soldiers soldiers, including their main commander. His rank is Lieutenant Colonel. So here we go, the real guy with a real face, the commander of the specific unit of the Russian regular armed forces that was trying to ambush Wagnerites but unsuccessfully. The Wagner soldiers were more successful because they are better trained, they have better equipment and basically those guys are more professional compared to the regular Russian army. And in this particular case, uh, this guy was drunk as many of his soldiers. But before other groups put some mines on the road which Wagner took to evacuate, let's say, from the Bahmut city. So it's the first documented, let's say, fight between the regular Russian army and the Wagner army. What can I say? More to come. So what will be the destiny of this guy? No one knows, but if they showed his face, I guess they will just pass him to the regular Russian army and he'll have his reward, the new medal for the fight. <laughs> the other popular Russian speaker, Strelko from the Angry Russian Patriotic Club, said that Prigozhin did the mistake publishing this information to everyone. He says that there's lots of the friendly fire happening and by publishing this information about the attack on the Wagner forces, Prigozhin rises the degree of the confrontation between him and the regular Russian army. There are lots of the interesting events happening, so let's go to the south at first, and Ukraine started the counter-offensive somewhere over here near to Rivno Pil, over here. Again, we don't have the map update, for example, like this, but we have the video from the area. So there was the real tank battle, I'll publish it on my Telegram channel. By the way, my friends, I use my Telegram as alternative resource if something goes wrong to my YouTube channel. And also, I upload the current information there on a daily basis. So for today, I published lots of the news, and if you want to stay in touch with me, just go to my Telegram, you may find it just in the video video description below. And some of the content I cannot publish on YouTube, so you may find it also on the Telegram, including this fight. I'll publish it just after I'll record this video, so you can see some of the tanks from one of the side, over here and over here, and some of the tank from the other side, and plus there's the tank in this forest line. And there was the real fight, this tank was demolished as well as the other one, it's the classical penetration and the explosion of the shells like on the T-72 tank, where you have the shells right beneath the crew. And again, it happened somewhere over here near to Novodarivka or Rivnopil, not sure about the precise location, but somewhere in this area. Is it the start of the big offensive operation that we are all waiting for from Ukraine? I guess not, because Ukraine used not lots of the forces to assault on this particular area. Also, there was advancement towards Palivka, near to Vulidar, just the light one, and on other direction. The Russian side also stated that Ukraine moved forward from Velika Novosolka towards Neskushna village. On this military map, it's over here, but for that fight, we don't have the 
confirmation or any kind of the drone video. Nevertheless, Ukraine continued to use the limited forces here and there trying to find out the weak spot for the Russian Federation. Or this attack was down to deflect the attention of the Russian forces from the main attack vector. Based on my personal feelings, I would say and I do analyze lots of the information which is coming uh, from the Ukraine and around Ukraine, I may say that the counteroffensive will start very soon. Yes, I understand that I told you about it in my last video, but I guess in a near by two weeks so i would bet on this let's go for the belgorod area there is a very interesting event shebekina city actually the area of that city is the same as in bahmut yes it has less buildings but if we speak about the square kilometers it's mostly the same but i would still call it the town more than a city so it was evacuated mostly people evacuated themselves and they now live in relatives houses or something like that russia doesn't really care about their own refugees for them it's better to close the eyes and say nothing is happening in Shebekina. Nothing is happening in Shebekina. But something is definitely happening. Shebekina is under the constant fire from the artillery systems or rocket artillery systems and the village of Novaya Tavozhanka was captured or was liberated, it's better to say, by the Russian Legion of Freedom and also Russian Volunteer Corps. The fighting is ongoing for the Muram village and it's half encircled also by the Russian opposition forces. And the Shebekina outskirts also were taken by the volunteer forces of the Russian legion, let's say. So they tried their offensive here, here and also over here. As it was reported by the Russian Volunteer Corps, they were able to capture four of the villages in that area. This military map was published today on some of the Ukrainian resources. It's hard to say whether it's true or not, but looks promising because we all know that the Russian Freedom Legion was able to capture Novatovazhanka, so we know that they are in because there were some of the videos from that place and I also published those on my Telegram channel because I cannot really publish the fighting videos on YouTube. For this time the Russian forces possess some resistance compared to the previous escalation from the Russian legion then they entered also the Belgorod region. But Wagner wants to put their forces over here if they see that the Russian regular army does not cope with their duties. And also there was the message this evening from Kadyrov. He said that he got around 70,000 soldiers, which is actually false. In a best case scenario he got around 5,000 soldiers. So he also wants to send those Kadyrov forces to the Belgorod area. Basically he repeated the narrative of Prigozhin. As you can see Russia has many of the armies and more or less they are independent. Wagner forces are truly independent and they are out of the control. So who will move faster to the Belgorod region to protect let's say the Russian citizens? Kadyrov forces or Prigozhin forces? Let me create the poll in the Telegram channel. To vote just subscribe for my Telegram. Ok, let's believe Kadyrov that he got 70,000 soldiers. 70,000 soldiers filming TikToks. I think it's too much even for the poor Belgorod Oblast. Plus there was the other situation from political spectrum in this area. So the leader of the Russian Volunteer Brigade, his name is Denis, today say that they want to exchange soldiers or to just give them to the Russian side if the local governor will meet with them. And they wanted just to ask few of the questions and just pass those guys to him. Those are the regular Russian army soldiers that were captured by the Russian volunteers. You may see all of their faces, it's not fake, those are truly Russian soldiers and they could be found in the social media as well as relatives may recognize them. So they are not the fake prisoners as Russia sometimes publish lots of the men wearing masks from the Ukrainian side who were imprisoned by Russians. 
The governor of the Belgrade Oblast, his surname is Gladkov, recorded the video today telling that those guys are barbarians, they used the bad tactics, but anyways, he would like to meet with them to take the prisoners, but he pointed out the new location and it's very far away from the controlled territory of the Russian Volunteer Division. Basically, by saying so, Gladkov refused to take his own soldiers. But Prigozhin entered this drama and he recorded the video or maybe audio, I don't remember actually, and he said Said that he may send his high rank commanders to get those guys from the prison. Prigozhin politely said to the guy, calling him Dennis by name, and Dennis also called Mr. Prigozhin. In the end, no one came to take those prisoners, and they were sent to the Ukrainian side for the future exchange for Ukrainian soldiers. And where is the official Russia? It's just not reacting to those events. Putin is closed now in his bunker. The Gladkov, the governor of the Belgorod Oblast, tried to solve this issue with those attacks, with those prisoners. He called to Kremlin, but there was no response. I think that Kremlin doesn't care until those guys are in the Moscow city. And the Russian population also doesn't care. Then Russia attacked Ukraine. Our society was very united. There were lots of the volunteers who were willing to join the Ukrainian army and who joined it in Russian Federation nothing changed. It is great for Ukraine because what is happening right now is the worst case scenario for the Russian Federation perspective. If you still don't understand, right now in Russia there is already a civil war. All right, Belgium is kind of concerned because they spotted their weaponry in the Russian Freedom Legion. The weaponry was supposed to be sent to Ukraine and how it go to the Russian Freedom Legion, it's hard to say. For sure, there will be some sort of the small investigation just for those bureaucrats to be satisfied, but there will be no any punishment for the Ukrainian side. Wagner published this post on their media resources showing the destroyed building of the Grozny city and they say Grozny 2000 we can repeat. In 1999 and 2000 Grozny was completely demolished by the Russian regular army. Now they rebuilt it but there were lots of the life lost and lots of the Wagner soldiers and current Wagner commanders served in the Russian special forces by that time and they do recall those events. They publish it because they want to remind Kadir of his place. And this is how Shebekina looks like right now, reminds me lots of the cities in Ukraine and Russia also bombs Shebekina because they think that there is the Russian Freedom Legion or something inside. All right, I just check out that according to Prigozhin, Ukraine took this side of the Bakhmut city. There is the green area as well. He said the southwest part and the southwest part of the city is over here. So Bakhmut wasn't occupied fully for a long time. Probably good news for the Sweden membership perspectives in NATO. Jens Stoltenberg went to Turkey to meet with President Erdogan and they discussed this issue. President Erdogan said that there is no complaints from the Turkish side right now for Sweden to join NATO alliance. All right, we have more news. According to the latest official information from the Ukrainian commander Sirsky, the general who is responsible for the eastern flank, Ukraine moved forward by 400 meters towards Svatova. It's awesome. Because just before, around two weeks ago, Russia was successful in this direction, taking Masutivka under their control. But Svatova is much more important because it's the main hub for supplies of this part of the front line. There was the rocket and the drone attack on Ukraine again the last night. Russia used just a few rockets, around six of the cruise missiles and five of the drones. Unfortunately, all of that stuff aimed to the specific spot and they targeted the Ukrainian airfield. Not sure if our military was there at that time. At first I thought that all the rockets were intercepted, but this morning we have this other information confirming that Russia targeted something. As for today's small offensive on the south, 
Russian officials already stated that Ukraine started the massive counterattack and they were able to cut our forces and eliminate the further movement of Ukrainian army. They also claim that the general commander of the Russian Federation Gerasimov was not far away from the front lines. It's very funny and let's see what they'll say then the counteroffensive will really happen. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, there are some links available down in the video description just below. You may support me on Patreon or on the sponsor of this YouTube channel. My friends, thank you so much for your awesome help and your support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.